time dilation is a phenomenon of, of, of special relativity that you know things that are going fast uh, things that are moving a lot time seems to go slower for them well in our models you can kind of see why that happens because what is time time is this inexorable process of executing computations motion is you get to recreate yourself at a different place in space that that phenomenon of motion the fact that you're recreating yourself at a different place in space that takes computational effort. So you know that you have this trade-off. What are you going to spend your computational effort on? You're going to spend your computational effort on moving in space, or are you going to use it on progressing in time? And so when you're moving in space, you're using up your computation on motion, so you don't have as much left over to progress in time. So that means you effectively, time goes slower for you. And that's what time dilation comes from. And, and the math works out, and that's... That's really how it works. To me, it's really amazing that you can give what is essentially a mechanistic explanation of what seemed to be a purely kind of the math happens to work out that way kind of phenomenon. But okay, so that's how this works in, in physical space. In branchial space, there's a similar phenomenon. You have these geodesics, these shortest paths, things travel on shortest paths, but now energy momentum also deflects shortest paths in branchial space. And then what's the consequence of that? Well, it's, there's this, there's something is, 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 is deflecting shortest paths and it's moving where you are in branchial space. The fundamental law of quantum mechanics, one way to state it is the Feynman path integral. The Feynman path integral says you have this thing that is what's called the action, kind of this relativistically invariant version of energy um, and that the presence of action, effectively energy momentum, is the thing that changes the phase of your, uh, of, the, of your description of the quantum system. So in other words, the presence of energy momentum is making this change. So in our models, the presence of energy momentum is deflecting GD6. It's moving things, but it's moving things not in physical space, but in branchial space. So now the question is, what, what is motion in branchial space? Well, motion in branchial space appears to be change of quantum phase. And so what's happening is what in the, the phenomenon that is general relativity, that is deflection due to gravity in physical space, that same phenomenon, the deflection in branchial space is a change of quantum phase. And that change of quantum phase is what the path integral says should happen in quantum mechanics. So in other words, what one's saying is, Quantum mechanics is the same phenomenon as gravity and general relativity. What is general relativity in physical space is quantum mechanics in branchial space. They're the same thing. Does that imply it's a symplectic geometrical, that branchial space is also symplectic uh, space? In, in other words, that's manifold. Uh, it's essentially an abstract manifold on which these things can take, take place? Or am I misinterpreting that? So it's a little complicated because momentum is this flux of causal edges through time-like hypersurfaces. And so when you look at a, a commutation relation that's about uh, this flux of causal edges as compared to position, I don't know the answer. It's quite possible that it's, it's not mathematically trivial to figure that out. Um, it, it, uh, an interesting question about these commutators and anti-commutators is the presence of, you know, there are two very different kinds of particles, bosons and fermions, uh, things like photons, where you can cram as many photons as you want into something. Uh, they really like to hang out together, which is why lasers work, or electrons, but they really don't like to hang out together. You can only get one electron in a given state, and that's why, you know, matter doesn't collapse and things like this. And that's, that's some, uh, and so this distinction between fermions and bosons is the distinction between commutators and anti-commutators in quantum mechanics. And it looks like there is, in these multi-way graphs, it looks like, we don't know exactly how this works, but it looks like there is a relationship between kind of the, the structure of these multi-way graphs and whether when you have a branch in the multi-way graph, it immediately recombines or not, that that's related to the presence of the, that, that, that the, the branching and recombining is a commutator being equal to zero. And so the, uh, um, 
it seems like bosons are that case and fermions are the case where things sort of tree out and don't recombine.